Hello, this is Bob McClellan. In this screencast, I will show details about Presentation Builder, which is used to create a new presentation document from slides in one or more existing presentation documents. I will start by showing how to download and build the sample code, then I will show why it is so challenging to copy slides and show some detailed techniques from the Presentation Builder code that solve those challenges. The detailed discussion will involve looking closely at c -sharp code that uses the classes from the OpenXML SDK. So let's get started. You can get the source code for Presentation Builder from PowerTools at CodePlex.com. You can see the address here. And then go to the Download tab and look for the latest version of Presentation Builder. The first version of Presentation Builder is 2.2.8 and that presentation builder code is also included in the core code for all the power tools same which is the also version 2.2.8 so you'll download that file unzip it into a project directory like this start the open the solution and then you can build it now you may need to change one or two of these references, particularly the document format that OpenXML. That one is refers to a an assembly that comes with the OpenXML SDK, and that may need to be modified for your particular installation. I've covered the operation of this example and how this what this example does in general in my quick introduction screencast, which you can also find on openxmldeveloper.org. I will, of course, look at this in more detail exactly how the uh, slides are specified here in this example. Let's first look at uh, this first example here. This one is using the same source document for all of its slides, but it's not taking all of the slides out of it. It's only using particular ones out of the source. Some people may think of this as taking a presentation and deleting unwanted slides, and it is equivalent to that, but the advantage of this approach is that we never modify existing files, so there's no possibility of accidentally destroying good files or good presentation documents since we're always creating a new one. I would like to start by looking at this slide source class in Presentation Builder. And the slide source, you can see, has three different constructors here. The first one has no start or count. And that would indicate that you w wish to include all of the slides from that source presentation document. The second one indicates just the start. So it would start with that specified slide and then include all you know, or copy all the rest of them and then the last one has the start and how many you want from that source so with those three you can do you know pick out exactly which slides you want one way or another you can get what you want from those that last argument keep master is used to indicate whether or not it should cont copy over the master for those slides or use the master that already exists in the new presentation document. Of course, one master must always exist, so it will automatically copy the first master from the first slide, no matter how that value is set. But I'll talk about the whole master copy in more detail later in the screencast. This first example, then, is taking slide number zero, which is the first one in the source, and copying just that one slide. So the count is just one. And then the next line specifies to take slide number one, which is actually the very next slide. But because I, I was showing that you, in this example that we were picking one intro, that would easily, you could easily change that to two or three, depending on which intro slide you wanted. In case you're not, haven't looked at this example, I'm gonna show you the presentation quickly that we're looking at. So there's the title one, that's slide zero. And then we have one, two, or three, depending on which of those introductory slides you'd want to include. 
and then and so on through. Then the sales bios we're I'm picking out starting with slide four, taking two, and then the content, the ninth slide, really the tenth slide, but indexed as number nine. And then the closing. As I said before, you could effectively think of it as okay, I'm I'm going to of these three slides, delete two of them. You could think of it as deleting, but since we're creating a new presentation, it's not really a delete operation, but it is logically equivalent to deleting the slides you don't want. Now in that first one, they all come from the same presentation, they all have the same master, so I just used the false value for keep master, although it will, as I said, copy the master the first for the first slide. In the second group, I'm picking one slide out of one source and then all of the slides out of the second. But again, I'm in that second one, I'm specifying that the master is not copied, so those will pick up the master of that first slide, which is the primary uh, des desired behavior of this particular example. And then finally, there's the one where I just put them all, to put three presentations together exactly as they appear. So by copying the masters, I make sure that none of those presentations change appearance from their original. Uh, if we look at the output for these, we'll see that this is that same one but shorter, only eight slides instead of the 14. This one, if you look at the originals, the master is set by this title slide and then these are picking up the formatting from the master. And we'll look at this in more detail in a little bit here. And then the last one is where we keep the master. So as each group of slides is included here, it has its maintaining its formatting from its own master slides. The presentation builder itself is made up of one source file that actually does the primary work of the presentation builder and then there are three support files and I'm just going to talk about these briefly. Uh, the details of these have been covered pretty well in other screencasts on openxmldeveloper.com but I'm just going to cover quickly what each of them is doing. The PT OpenXML document.cs is managing these documents in memory. In my work with the OpenXML SDK, I found that the most efficient processing comes from keeping the document in memory while it's being modified, especially with kind of the detailed extensive modifications that tend to occur in this kind of coding. And as I said, these are covered a lot more in other places. And there are other ways to do it. This is not the only way. It's just I've found it to be a very efficient way to do it. One of the nice things that this code also uh, contains is a lot of uh, identification of what kind of document it is and automatically knowing whether or not it really is the kind of document you think. And it also has these create functions which create minimum documents. And so if we look down here, for example, in the create presentation document, it, it has the code that creates a minimum amount of XML for a valid presentation document before we start adding slides into it. So that's what that module does. It's just handling those documents, and you'll see this in the sample code. The next one, this one contains some extension methods for X document. I'm, I'm sorry, for the open XML parts, which make it simpler to manage these in-memory uh, pieces, and no, and it makes it so that we don't have to read in the parts into memory until they're needed. And also in this file, because there's very little uh, of this detailed code, but then there's these large tables of uh, 
X namespaces and X names, which just make the other code easier to uh, having these all defined makes it easier to just drop them into the rest of the code. And you'll see those as I go through the code later in Presentation Builder. So if I go down to if I go down to the P namespace, that's the presentation ML uh, names, and you can see there is not all that many that are needed for Presentation Builder, but that's you'll uh, you'll see references to these in that code as we go through it. And then there's PTUtil, and this contains just a few handy functions that make it easier to process some of the more complicated uh, elements that appear in some of the documents. These are just the basic files that are used in a lot of the code that is in that Power Tools area on CodePlex. So it's included for Presentation Builder. So with that out of the way, let me talk a little bit about what is so challenging about copying slides. It seems slides seem very distinct and how hard could it be really to copy slides? Well, let's take a look a little bit at even some of these simple sources. I'm going to look at some of the original documents first. Let's take this one. So this is a really simple, other than the chart, of course, but that, there's a reason why I want to include that. This is a pretty simple set of slides. There's uh, has a very simple master, no no images really in there. So I'm gonna I'm going to open this in an editor that is integrated into Visual Studio, which you would have to in order to use this you have to download and install the file. It's called the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Studio 2010. And it's very handy for OpenXML document work because it shows all the parts and their relationships in this and you can then quickly get to the XML through the editor in Visual Studio. So in this case we have the the core or the starting point for a presentation document is this presentation.xml and it has relationships to a theme, all the slides, you can see slide 1, 2, and 3 in there, there's a slide master that's referred to. Uh, these relationships, and again there are other screencasts about this, they can be explicit or implicit. In this case you can tell that explicit ones will have some kind of um, reference to the relationship ID in the XML. So I'm going to look at the XML here for presentation.xml and I'm going to reformat it using control ED in here so that I can read it much more easily. And right at the top we can start with the slide master ID list and there's the under the R colon ID is the explicit reference to the master slide part or the relationship to the master slide part. Then we have three explicit re references to slides which are the RID 2, 3, and 4 and then the rest of this is uh, XML that is normally included in a presentation document created by PowerPoint but is not required in uh, for a functioning XML document. We'll notice that the theme, which I mentioned there was a reference to the theme, is implicit. It's not explicitly detailed here. And so these implicit and explicit relationships are the first challenge that we come across when we start trying to talk about copying because as I copy slides I'm going to need to keep maintaining this list with the relationships and I can't use the IDs here when I copy into a new one I have to make sure that I'm matching the IDs of the relationships that are created in the new document and of course 
we could easily, if I go to another, bring in another one, let's bring in this company's one, and look at its presentation, XML, you can see there's overlap. One, we have the same IDs, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I could not reuse those same IDs anyway. I'd have to use new ones, and normally I let the SDK generate those new IDs because I don't want them to overlap. I let it handle that. Another challenge that comes up, if we go back to look at these slides and look at slide two, here we have a reference to the chart. And that's in a separate part, just for the chart. And then it also has an embedded worksheet that drives that chart. And these are objects that, although we could certainly, if we were copying, say, just slide one out of this, we could copy that chart also, but we wouldn't want to. It would just be, it would be an extra piece that isn't referenced anywhere, and that would not be a good document to end up with. So we have to know that slide two references the chart, and when we copy slide two and only slide two, that we need to pick up the chart piece and the embedded worksheet. And so you tend to get these chains of interrelated markup that need to come along whenever you copy the slide that requires them. So that, that is the challenge and the reason why it is so difficult to get a functioning process that handles the variety of cases that can actually occur in a presentation document. I plan to get to some detailed code in this part, but it is running long. In part two, I will show the details of how slides are copied along with the correct layout, master, and theme parts. Then in part three, I will show how other related parts like audio, images, and charts are copied correctly. So stay tuned, so to speak.